Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another episode of Five Bookish Facts. Today is another one that wasn't specifically requested by anybody, but I really wanted to do it because I have been reading Rebecca, and it seemed like a good time to do an episode on Daphne du Maurier. So, without further ado, let's get started. So Rebecca is admired by a lot of writers, one of those being Stephen King, and so King said he recommends it as a book any aspiring popular writer should read, if only for its bravura pacing and narrative control. Critics may sneer, but it's impossible to do this sort of thing unless you have an almost perfect downbeat in your head. Du Maurier had it. So it's also one of Sarah Waters' favourite books and she said, Du Maurier was a brilliant storyteller and a great evoker of place. Rebecca is far and away her best work, troubling and vivid and slightly queer. Okay, fact number two is that, speaking of slightly queer, Du Maurier was slightly queer, as in she was bisexual, and actually in the introduction of this edition, which I recommend not reading before the book because it's full of spoilers, and kind of ruined it a little bit for me, but it did talk a lot about Du Maurier and her relationships with women, which is very fascinating, but she was also queer, as in weird. So as a child, she was a bit of a tomboy, she used to dress as a boy, she used to cut her hair short, she had an alter ego for herself called Eric Avon, and she later referred to this kind of repressed male side of herself as the boy in the box. And bear in mind that she was born quite a long time ago as well, when this was, I suppose, much more frowned upon as well. So yeah, she definitely had a, a reputation for being a bit of a queer child. Okay, fact number three is that Du Maurier has a novel called Mary Anne. It was published in 1954, and it's basically a fictionalised account of her great great grandmother, Mary Anne Clark, who was Mary Anne Clark Nay Thompson. From 1803 to 1808, she was the mistress of Frederick Augustus, the Duke of York and Albany, and he's the real life grand old Duke of York who had 10,000 men who marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. He was also the son of King George III and the brother of the later King George IV. Fact number four is that in about 1937, when then Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Neville Chamberlain, flew to meet Adolf Hitler to sign the Munich Agreement, he read a book on the plane while he was flying there, and the book that he read was... And fact number five is that Daphne du Maurier's grandfather was an author and cartoonist called George du Maurier. I suggest you give him a Google. So there we have it, there are five bookish facts about Daphne du Maurier. Don't forget to let me know in the comments which authors you would like to see an episode on. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.